it's time to do the final illustration so let me show you the thumbnail I've come up with and I'll move it out of the light so there's no glare. This is the rough thumbnail idea I have for the final peach topa illustration. I'm using the prompt spooky and I decided to go with a kelpie and that isn't really what <laughs> A horse skull looks like but I was just drawing this from my imagination so I'll go back over my horse anatomy before actually going in for the final sketch of this and I've got some other thumbnails up there that I'm going to end up working on for other things as well. When I'm doing my thumbnails I usually like to do them quite small and I tend to focus more on getting the idea out and they tend to come out a little bit more all over the place, I guess, is probably one way of putting it. Um, and once I have these like little mini ideas, then I can go in and do more finished sketches to get the idea out. So I thought I'd just show you that. And I've got some other things stuck in here, but I'm already making use of the stationery <laughs> from last week's video. And yeah, there's some more thumbnails up there but it's time to get started on this. Hello and welcome to a new voiceover. I hope that you're doing well and you had a fun October. It is currently the beginning of November as I'm recording this and I am still recovering a little bit so you might be able to hear it in my voice and I do apologize for that. I'm going to try and take breaks record recording, recording, <laughs> recording this voiceover so that um, I can allow my voice to rest a little bit, especially since this is a longer video. But I will be talking about the process, my ideas behind uh, the prompt, and also talking a little bit about what I've been up to recently. This is my fourth and final Peachtoba illustration for this challenge. And you did hear me right, I said four and not five. If any of you have been following the series since I started prepping for it in September, you'll know that I originally planned to do five illustrations, but due to just how life has been <laughs> in October and the fact that I've just been getting sick back to back pretty much throughout the entire month, I ended up doing four in the end. And that's just it worked out better for me. I was still able to participate and sometimes you have to adjust to what happens. <laughs> and I ended up picking the prompt spooky for the final week and I had the urge to do a Kelpie portrait pretty much the entire month. As soon as I saw the prompt list, this was what was coming up in my head and I knew that I wanted to do a portrait of a kelpie and I knew what kind of direction that I wanted to go in with it well typically kelpie which are creatures from Scottish myth but water horses also show up in many other cultures as well you can find folklore regarding water horses in Irish folklore in the Isle of Man in England in Wales and also in areas of Scandinavia as well. Though that's by no means an exhaustive list, I'm sure water horses show up in many other cultures and countries as well. But in regards to Kelpie specifically, they are shape-shifting creatures that are typically depicted as black horses, and they do also shift into human forms as well in some folk tales. And as is the case for a lot of creatures in fairy tales across the world, they are not the most benevolent of creatures. In most folk tales and in modern media as well, they are more on the male malevolent end. And one of the common stories regarding Kelpie are that they are more likely to snack on a human than help a human. <laughs> but you can also come across some folk tales in Scotland 
where they are lonely creatures that seek human companionship as well, but that isn't the direction I went in with this one. I definitely went in the snacking <laughs> direction. As I mentioned in Scottish folklore, they are usually described as black horses, but in modern media and in things like fiction, so your fantasy books, I know that there's a lot of fairy fantasy going around in the last like 10 years. You occasionally come across Kelpie and they are described in all sorts of different ways now. And one way they are sometimes described is more decaying and skeletal, a little bit more obviously malevolent and evil. And that's the direction that I went in with this rather than the more traditional direction of it being more just like a black horse that you're tempted to go up to and stroke and that's how it catches you. But in this direction I wanted to blend together elements of the skull and then also still have some of the elements of it being alive, so the ears, the hair and everything like that. And I also wanted to adjust the skull a little bit as well. Some of you may have noticed from the very beginning of me inking that there are very obvious and very prominent canines on the skull. And you might think that that's rather odd for a horse because it is. But some horses, and it's typically the males, but some female horses do have this as well, have small canines. And it's a, a relic, pretty much, from what I can tell from researching it, that's no longer useful for them. It's something that they used to use to fight, and it's no longer really a huge thing, which is why it's kind of evolving out of them now, in a way, and you don't see it all the time. But you can come across a lot of horse skulls when you're doing horse anatomy that still have the canines. So what I did was I took the positioning and shape of the actual canines that horses can have and then I just elongated and exaggerated them to make it look more like the canines you'd find on a creature that have particular snacking preferences. I hope that gives you a little bit of a background behind how I came up with this. And I definitely want to take my experiences, the positives and the negatives and everything, from doing this illustration and then expanding upon it further. I definitely want to go back and explore Kelpie and take more time designing the Kelpie and also looking through modern depictions and also more traditional depictions as well and designing different variations for each of those and just exploring and experimenting with the idea of a Kelpie creature more. Folklore and fairy tales, fairies, creatures are all big interests of mine and they always have been and it's something that I want to actually start exploring more in my own creative practice and through doing that I can also find out what I want to be doing creatively and through practice and actually doing the things I'm interested in I'm hoping to improve and find out what I want to do with my style, how I want to do certain things, how I don't want to do certain things because there's a lot of things from this I learned that I enjoy and there's a lot of things that I learned from this that I found I don't enjoy and textures I like, textures I don't like, things that I need to improve at and all of that lovely stuff. One big takeaway from doing this that I definitely want to spend time on improving but also figuring out, figuring out is, is the big takeaway, is the hair. I I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with how I like to simplify hair, but I still want to explore two things. One thing is how simple I want to go versus how detailed, and then also how I want to deal with the inside of the hair. So when I'm doing the colouring, do I want to do flat washes? Do I want to have loads of layers? Do I want to do the layers with watercolour? Do I want to do the layering with colour pencil? 
How do I want to render different colors in the shading? How do I want to render the hair? Is another takeaway from this that I really need to figure out for myself. It's not necessarily that I need to just improve at it. Improve at it is more in terms of the ability to execute, which I do need to do as well. I want to improve at the ability to execute drawing and painting hair, but I also want to figure out how I want to draw and paint hair. So it's turn it's both the figuring out and the improving <laughs> at that I took away from this. I know that I need to explore this more and work on it more and I want to do that both for animals but also for humans as well. One thing that catches a lot of artists out is the feeling that you need to keep studying or you need to keep putting off the things that you want to do until you're good enough and that is something that I have struggled with too. I think a, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people in in a lot of different creative fields, not just art, illustration, etc, but a lot of creative fields, there's this idea that you're not allowed to do the thing until you are good enough and you are never good enough because the idea of good enough is just a mental construct that you've invented or a mental construct that you have adopted that someone else has invented and you end up going on this never-ending quest or a quest that takes you 10-20 years before you figure out that that quest was BS basically for lack of a better term and it's something that I'm having to come to face with more and more now and it's something that I've been spending a lot of 2023 coming to terms with is that I need to just do the thing rather than putting it off until I am this fake idea of good enough. You're never going to see yourself as good enough and funnily enough by doing the thing that you're interested in doing you actually start to improve at the thing that you want to do and you figure out if that thing is actually something you want to do. You could spend your entire life <laughs> thinking that you want to do a certain thing and you prepare yourself to do that certain thing and then you just end up finding out that it's not something you enjoy when you finally get around to doing it or you realize that once you've done your 20 years of studying that you are finally allowed to make that comic and then when you go in to make the comic you realize that there's all sorts of skills that you need to learn by doing the comic. The actual doing of the comic teaches you a lot of what you need to know about making comics. Or it teaches you that you actually prefer doing animation. Or it teaches you that you actually prefer doing illustration. Or it teaches you that you need to do more towards storytelling. And the way that you need to do more towards storytelling is by doing storytelling. And the actual act of doing in conjunction with studying is incredibly valuable. But a lot of people, as I said, tend to put off the actual creating part until they feel like they're ready. And that is more often than not more damaging to you creatively than it is helpful. It is rough though at the same time because you do come face to face with your skill level precisely as it is right now. But by doing what you want to do you're not only feeding that part of you that needs to be creative but you're also giving yourself the experience in the thing that you want to do and you're also showing yourself why you need to improve next like i mentioned i know that i now want to go off and i want to do more pieces where i'm focusing on different ways of rendering hair and then once i figure out ways that i enjoy rendering hair i'm then going to do it over and over and study it so that I can improve and 
part of that is going to be studying and part of that's also going to be doing more illustrations where hair is featured <laughs> and that is one way that I am trying to incorporate this idea of actually just pursuing the things I'm interested in alongside studying even though it can be very jarring sometimes to come face to face with your skill level and where it's at or where your art style is right now and also what you see in your head versus what comes out on paper all of that's very jarring but actually doing it and exposing yourself to it also makes it easier over time in a way as well that went off in a direction I didn't expect it to I wasn't anticipating getting into that in this voiceover but if it's it's a very detailed topic and if it's something that you would be interested in me making a video on or more videos on please leave any of that in the comments any questions you might have or anything you'd like to see in future videos as well and like I said it's it's something that has ended up helping me but it has been a very um it's been a good and a bad transition there's there's been elements of it that are very jarring and difficult to get used to but ultimately I know it's healthier and will lead to more happiness for me creatively over time and yeah the watercoloring let's let's maybe get into the watercoloring now shall we rather than the the super deep topics so you'll have seen that the first layer was quite interesting the hair was a bright blue the ears were brown and you can still see the yellow green of the algae i wanted to do some undertones in the layering for this and i knew that i wanted to make a a darker horse um, which is typical with kelpie and i wanted to do the kind of black horse you see where the coat is more sort of a warm very very dark brown and then the hair has more sort of raven tones to it and that ended up through the under painting that I did coming out as quite a stark difference so I did end up having to adjust that with the colour pencil afterwards and I made the ears a little bit more blue toned and neutralised some of that intense warmth and it ended up coming together a little bit more towards the end through the colour pencil layering. And as seems to be the theme with Peachtober this year, I had a big area of granulation. So on top of the mixture of, I think it was ultramarine and phthalo blue heavily watered down and then knocked back a touch with a little bit of brown for the first layer of the hair. I then did one layer of watercolor over the top, which was a heavily granulating mixture and I used quite a few different granulating pigments for the hair. I used Bloodstone Genuine, which is a really dark brown. I used Ultramarine, Viridian, and then I also added in some PV19, which is non-granulating. That's Quinacridone Rose. So I had the Quinacridone Rose and Viridian mixed together to make a sort of neutralized purple, a little bit of Ultramarine, and then also just a ton of that bloodstone to kind of end up making this blue and dark brown granulating mixture with just hints of the pink from the quinacridone rose and hints of green from the viridian and that's the one layer that i did on top of the base layer i didn't end up doing any further layers in watercolor on top because i didn't want to disturb the granulation. I did some layering with colour pencil on top which just adds to the texture in the hair. You can see that I left painting in the skull for last and there is a reason for that. I knew that I wanted to make sure that the skull remained the lightest value area in the whole illustration 
and I wanted to make sure that the eyes, the ears and the hair were the darkest so I made sure to do all of the painting of those elements first and leave the skull for last because with watercolour you work transparently and you can't take back how dark a pigment is once you put it down and so what I decided to do with this was to just leave the skull until the end of the painting process and then I could really take my time and use the values surrounding the skull to determine how dark and light I wanted to go and I knew that with the shadow areas I wanted to do two things. I wanted to use warm tones to contrast the cool tones of the hair and I also wanted to make sure that the shadows were still light in value in comparison to the eyes, the ears and the hair as well. And leaving it until last definitely helped. So that's something that I can take away for future things. In this colour pencil process you see here, I do actually have all of my colour pencils out on the table. I can't remember off the top of my head how many polychromous pencils I have, but I know it's under 30. I think it's like 27 or 28 colours. And I started with the 12 set in the tin, and then I just kept adding a couple colours here and there. And it was mainly the range of pinks, purples, blues, and browns I remember that I needed to add to the most from the 12 colour set. But I definitely think the 12 colour set is a good way to go if you're interested in trying colour pencils because you can layer them and end up getting different kinds of greens and different kinds of effects just by using those 12 on top of each other and then if you find that you really really like to produce a certain colour or you feel like you're missing a certain colour then you can always expand from there and just do so over time which is what I did and I'm pretty happy with the set that I have I don't particularly feel like I am missing any colours it just takes me longer to layer up particular colours that I want sometimes and at the moment I'm definitely noticing that with the greens if I were to invest in some more I definitely think it would be greens and green blues I am having to layer up the greens that I have with different browns and yellow earth tones and sometimes just yellow as well in order to get the more earthy muted kinds of greens that I'm wanting and I currently have three greens. I have the green that you can see, the, set, uh, the third from the left, which I think is emerald green. I have light green and then I have a, a dark forest green, but I can't remember the exact name for that one off the top of my head. And the addition of the dark green, that was an additional uh, colour pencil that I got when I noticed that I really needed a dark green. That definitely helped by adding that in but I do feel like I need a a base earth green if I were to expand my collection a little bit more but for now all of these work because like I said I can layer browns and earth yellows, yellows on top of the green and also layering oranges and reds on top of the green as well to just knock it back a little bit and make it a little bit more earthy. I think one of the things that I want to explore with the hair, going back to the point I made earlier about how I want to figure out how I want to render hair, is that I'm not sure if I want to do one flat wash like this or if I want to do a flat wash with further layers on top for shading, if I want to reserve some areas of light, if I want to do more of the rendering with colour pencil, and if so, do I just make sure that the initial washes are quite light because it will be difficult to produce certain light and dark effects with just the colour pencil, and there's loads of different things basically that I want to expand upon and explore upon and figure out from doing this. So I'm really, really grateful that I did the hair this way so that I can then figure out how I do and don't 
want to do the hair in the future. I do go in with these brown color pencils you can see here just to add some different areas of color and light and shadow. I also go in with white as well and I'm not sure how I like that effect. I like it in some cases and I, like it. I don't like it in others. So I want to explore how I want to show light in the hair as well if I want to just leave areas of watercolor layers or if I want to go in with color pencil to create the lightness. I need to figure that out and then I also just need to improve upon showing light and shadow in the hair as well, especially in a simplified form. I'm not sure how I want to do it in a simplified way compared to a more realistic way and things like that. So these are all things I want to explore through further practice and then also further study as well. In the terms of Peachtober, I have enjoyed the challenge overall. It was definitely a very difficult month. Uh, it was very difficult in real life and with my health and everything, but I did manage to get some things done and I did manage to participate in my own little way. And I do encourage you to participate in things that you might want to do, but to find a way that it fits in your life in a healthy way, a healthy and a sustainable way. There's always ways that you can get around doing stuff more often than not. And sometimes it requires a little bit of creativity. Sometimes it takes a little bit of compromise and sometimes it takes a little bit of surrender and you just have to let some things go. But you can still, more often than not, still participate in your own way, no matter what might be going on in your life. And yeah, I did manage to participate in Peachtober and I had a lot of fun talking to people over on Instagram about it as well and a few of my friends over there were participating in Peachtober or in Inktober or in Drawtober or in any of the Toba 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 Tobas. And will I be participating next year? I don't know yet. Maybe. I might do a couple pieces, but I, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be doing a weekly version, if I'm going to try and do five, if I'm going to try and do big pieces, small pieces, if I want to do one giant piece that incorporates different prompts and then I just spend all month on that one piece. We'll see. It's it's a whole year away. <laughs> um, for now, I just want to focus on taking what I've learned from this and moving forward and onwards and upwards with my creativity and with my illustrations. If any of you are joining in for any of the art challenges this October, let me know how it went in the comments down below. What materials were you using? Did you enjoy using them? What did you get up to? Which prompts were you using? All of that lovely stuff. Let me know down in the comments. And coming up, I have a few different videos. Some are going to be regarding the materials I was using and how I found them to be good or bad. My thoughts on them. One of them is going to be the Kurotake Bimoji brush pen. I know that that has been questioned about in the comments already so that is definitely a video that's going to be coming up and I'll probably put out a post in my community page about some of the topics that are coming up and then you can also add in any of the topics you might have in mind or any questions that you might have as well and we are getting closer and closer to a thousand subscribers now so I just want to thank you all so much for all of the support that you show on this channel and to me and to my art and to my videos. I am so, so grateful to all of you and I love talking to you in the comments. It brightens my day every time I open the app and I see that I have more comments and I get to chat to you. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!